Hello again, everyone. Keta Kostman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter. Since 1952, we track 450 individual softwood lumber and panel prices uh, on the wholesaler level, so FOB uh, sawmill. And I'm here today to talk about the latest data for softwood lumber production in Canada and the US and the sawmill capacity utilization rates. This data comes out of the Western Wood Products Association based in Portland, Oregon. And anyone who really um, is interested in what I'm about to say, do contact them, www.wwpa.org. Um, they have a monthly uh, publication called Lumber Track, which is where I got this information from. And um, it's really very good. Now, uh, remember that my lumber prices are weekly for that week. Uh, and the other data that I talk about, like housing starts or um, the like this, the uh, lumber production and sawmill, is uh, for is monthly and is for some previous month. The um, uh, most recent issue of the lumber track from the Western Wood Products Association is for June. Uh, I'm also going to cover um rail car loadings which i know that people like to see and as i said in the um, previous video with the lumber prices the uh, supply chain and transportation has been a real issue for the lumber uh, manufacturers and sellers always but uh, definitely um for the past year uh, year and a half okay so let's look at the data the uh, first six months of 2021 so January to June of 2021, U.S. lumber production increased by 5.3% compared to one year ago uh, to 19 billion board feet from 18 billion board feet. Uh, so that is first half of 2021 compared to first half of 2020. Uh, looking at just June, um, production is up 2.3%. Uh, to 3.2 billion board feet uh, compared to May of this year when it was 3.1 billion board feet. So really pretty stable. Uh, and in June of 2020, just June itself, it was also 3.1 uh, billion board feet in the US. Looking at Canada, which I uh, have been talking about for this past year, um, was hit a lot more uh, powerfully by the uh, restrictions due to COVID. The sawmills were shut down and then had to put in the social distancing before they could reopen. It took a long time. Uh, so the drop in production uh, last year was greater than the drop in production in the U.S. and therefore now the recovery is going to be greater as well. So uh, for the first six months of 2021, Canadian softwood lumber production increased by 13% to 12.6 billion board feet from 11.1 billion board feet in the first six months of 2020. So now this gives you an idea of how large the industry is, okay? So U.S. Uh, lumber production for the first six months of 2021 was 19 billion board feet, I said. Uh, Canada was 12.6. So U.S. is, is bigger um, in terms of total production volumes. Now, just looking at June, the month of June by itself, um, and looking just at British Columbia, which British Columbia is 50% of all Canadian lumber production. Um, good recovery. Lots of wood coming back online uh, during this year that we uh, had a drop in production last year. So increase of 20% to 5 billion board feet from... Uh, 4.2 billion board feet in June of 2020. So that's British Columbia. Uh, now, I think let's look at the graphs. So as far as production goes, you've got the green line above, which is the U.S., and the red line below is Canada. The U.S. Uh, in July of 2020 had been at a higher level of production and then was leveling off into the summer, whereas Canada, which had been so low, was recovering upward. And then we move along until February of this year when both countries were increasing production. And that's kind of around the time where we were reaching to that super high price of 1600 on the Western Spruce 2x4. So this graph 
ends for June of 2021, so we'll have to see. But let's listen to what's going on with the sawmill capacity utilization. The uh, highly optimized, uh, modernized, uh, invested sawmills in British Columbia are optimized to run at about 95% capacity. They never really did run at that much because by the time they were finished being built, sort of in the mid uh, um, early 2000s, um, that U.S. housing crash of 2006 came along and uh, those um, large sawmills were, instead of running three lines, three shifts, so, so three lines, 24 hours a day, they were running one line, one shift. So one line, eight hours a day, right? But that ability is there, okay? And so um, for the U.S., uh, the sawmill, the total capacity utilization rate is lower because there's still quite a few uh, smaller family-owned uh, sawmills that haven't necessarily been invested in. And, you know, now that these Canadian manufacturers are down in the U.S. Southern Pine Belt, let's say where previously the sort of like the maximum or the uh, high uh, capacity utilization rate in the U.S. was about 85%. Let's call it 90% now. I'm just kind of speaking anecdotally. So um, it's good. It's up. The uh, uh, For June or for the first six months of 2021, uh, the um, sawmill capacity utilization rate in the U.S. increased by 2% to 86%. So, so the mills are running, they're running hard. Um, Canada, like I said, you know, really 90% or 95% is what we would say is a good uh, rate. Um, improved uh, to 84% from where it had been at 76%, 65% in the worst months of last year uh, as the... Um, need to uh, you know retrofit uh, the interior of the sawmills to pr provide um, division uh, make uh, it so that the staff were at least six feet apart all that kind of stuff uh, really brought a very very big slowdown in manufacturing of lumber in Canada uh, during the um, early months of and the spring of last year okay so let's look at the charts I know everybody likes to see that. And then I'll come back um, and talk about rail car loadings. And so again, like the red line being Canada, you can see uh, from July of 2020, recovering finally from those really unprecedented lows of the capacity utilization rate, whereas the US, the green line, uh, humming along uh, relatively stable, Canada really dropping um, at the end of the year, which is a little bit normal. Um, and then we'll have to wait and see once again, this graph ends at June of this year. And so this is the price of that Western Spruce 2x4 benchmark commodity that I keep talking about. The blue line is this year where in the spring uh, everybody was crying because the price was so incredibly high. But like I said, the volumes were not that high. And uh, we've got now in the past few weeks seems to have hit a bottom and it's ticking back up quite a bit mirroring that yellow line, uh, which is uh, last year. So again, we'll have to wait and see how this year turns out. Here's the um, uh, two-year graph for the uh, six different construction framing items, uh, including your plywood. And, uh, you know, it looks really flat for the first half there because since uh, spring of last year, prices just started getting so high that it blows out all of the volatility from the previous. But you can see toward the end uh, right now, the bottom seems to have uh, been upon us. And whether that line, those lines uh, continue flat along the trajectory that they are, or if they start to go up into November, we'll have to wait and see. Okay, great. So you can see now this combination of data really supports what I've been saying about uh, the reasons why the lumber prices were changing, you know, since the past year and over the course of this year. Uh, the... Problems with supply chain uh, and transportation are just enormous. Uh, I'm writing a story on my website about the cargo. Um, just been hearing some real uh, problems at all the ports. Uh, a few weeks ago there, there was a issue with uh, one of the large, uh, I guess the largest port in Florida, 
um, the truck drivers were charging an additional $75 just to go there because they knew they were going to have to wait to unload. Um, and I mean, that's unknown, unheard of, that a truck driver, that a trucking company can dictate um, a surcharge like that. Usually the customer's like, whatever, I'll get the next one. Like, too bad for you. And now they're all doing it and people are paying because they can't get their goods to be moving. Um, and all up and down the East Coast and all up and down the West Coast, especially in the U.S., I've seen, but we're having same issues here in Canada. Um, there's unprecedented numbers of freighters anchored offshore waiting to find a, a um, berth to unload. So when you look at um, like I said in my previous video about the lumber market, um, lumber is a forward indicator. It's going to let you know what's happening with, uh, with commodities and generally with economic situation that other industries have not seen happen yet. Okay, so American Association of Railroads showing you United States uh, forest products movement 2019-2020 um, and the red line is 2021. Uh, this includes pulp, logs, paper, and lumber, okay? Uh, and so the same graph for Canada. You know, um, I guess it doesn't look too incredibly bad. We've got some drops there in the middle of the summer, not completely unusual. It's a real problem for sawmills to get their rail cars. I could do an entire thesis just on that. Here we have the same data. It's really good representation. It comes out of Yardeni. The red line is just lumber now, lumber and wood products, and the blue line is housing starts. So what is this huge drop that we have, you know, for the past four quarters or six quarters of uh, lumber moving on the railways compared to what the housing market is doing? It really explains a lot what the prices were for your lumber products during that exact time, if you actually can't get the wood, of course the price is going to go up. So where we had these issues on the railway and with trucks for um, transporting lumber last year and through this year now is being felt by other industries, by uh, other manufacturers delivering their goods, having a problem and guess what? Prices are going up and the customer is having to pay. I'm not going to itemize the things where the prices are going up. I think we had a pretty interesting conversation on Twitter earlier this year about shrinkflation or sneakflation, where the package of whatever it is you're buying is smaller, but the price is the same. So rather than like inflation, right? Rather than just straight up raising the price, which is also coming, uh, manufacturers have been um, putting less product in the packaging and charging the same. Uh, so let's just leave that there. I've got the link to my website um, in my caption. Uh, and the a subscribe here on my YouTube, certainly. But there's a, uh, in the menu on the top of my website, a subscribe uh menu that you can fill out a form and get a sample of the full 450 uh, lumber prices uh, every week. Um, have a look, see what you think, and if that appeals to you, you find that interesting and you think that that will help you with your business and making your plans, we can sign you up to the full dashboard uh, and you will be able to see the prices as they come out on Friday mornings rather than waiting a month <laughs> until I have time to write it up and uh, to make a YouTube. Okay.